Herosia Shipe here with a, uh, another Herosia Thought Bubble. And on this particular vlog, if you will, I'm going to talk about the long shadow on the world, um, which is affecting the crypto space, and that is China. In particular, just some of the beliefs and the FUD, which is fear, uncertainty, and doubt that is going on in the space. Um, some of it is, you know, legitimate in the concern of the Chinese people or the Bitcoin uh, users in China when it comes to the Bitcoin exchanges having or being shut down. Apparently Bitcoin mining is not. Uh, the usage of Bitcoin either could be banned or significantly restricted. It has a lot to do with ICOs. And again, just that the glee that people have with this going on because they can pick up Bitcoin cheaply. The Bitcoin can circumnavigate, you know, around China. It doesn't really matter if China were to start regulating. Either those are for the regulation of China and is necessary for the space. And that there's ICO stuff, which is a means upon which normal people can um, get into the ground bottom of businesses and and generate their own personal wealth and, and using cryptocurrency, the, the currency of crypto, to do that that financial instrument to do that uh cleaning it up and a lot of it has to do with in china you know their communist country they control everything they control the economic power uh during the 2009 there was a significant crackdown in their in their country about the way business are doing so it's understandable with icos where there are some shenanigans going on the schemes that they want to do some crackdown is an image issue it's a control issue capital flight issue a lot of issues when it comes to on the government side for China to do this and not really truly fundamentally unexpected what is really un unexpected is just I think the perspective that people have on this that this is not a gleeful thing this is not even a good thing but there's a lot of people that are in support of this they think it's necessary to clean up the space that regulation should be coming and they think that China is somehow some kind of savior or a market leader I've seen all sorts of wonky things on this and and I, I don't think that people fundamentally understand how this is not a great thing uh, yes it does prove that China you know if China were to ban it or do these tight controls that Bitcoin or cryptocurrency is going to circumnavigate it but it doesn't really fundamentally do things for people within China, the Chinese people. Yes, I'm sure they'll find a way, just like they find a way to watch porn and do other things, but it drives Bitcoin into the gray market, and they're not going to get the full benefit of the cryptocurrency space if this continues forward. On the other hand, just seeing how so there's some uh, industry leaders who think it's necessary for government regulation to come into the space, and anytime regulation comes into the space when they don't fundamentally understand the product or the industry, you, you get bad regulation, you get bad laws, you get bad, as a result, you get bad products. Just look what happened with the Digital Millennial Act, when it Rights Act, when it comes to the internet. And how, yes, it has protected safe harbor issues for uh, the internet, it fundamentally um, has hampered certain aspects of it, and it doesn't allow for the necessary growth, it has been misused, mismanaged, and there's other issues, you know, like with net neutrality, um, other industries have this experience. And it would be fundamentally would be nice for once that we would actually have people that are associated or part of the industry, because regulation will eventually come. But regulation should come that will benefit and help and enable the growth of this new financial instrument instead of restricting it and constricting it and putting it in a box that fits the existing economic model which is something that China is currently doing at this time and it's not making it a market leader or a leader into the cryptocurrency space uh, even if that is the direction that it's going to eventually go to but fundamentally I you know my personal concern is is just really just the, the Chinese people the people that are running and operating the exchanges that allegedly can't leave the country at this time um, I saw a report when it came to the ICO issue there was just one um, company where the people are trying to get their money back uh, because you know China is required that all the Chinese ICOs that raise funds had to return their money and they weren't getting their money back apparently one of the heads um, of the space uh, he actually initially founded BTC China uh, he is uh, not a Chinese uh, citizen but he has uh, Chinese heritage uh, he's actually I believe a Swiss citizen and established the ICO company in Switzerland, wasn't in the country, was in London, and doesn't look like he's coming back to China, but he states that things will come into order, um, eventually I guess, 
So there, there's a little wonky this on, the, on there, and I guess it's easier to justify, at least within China, how ICOs are bad. Um, and even outside the space, how ICOs are bad. But what I wanted to talk about is, you know, I wanted to kind of think about my version. Um, I see this down on James Bond about memeing. Memeing this thing where people are trying to do with China right now, this kind of like magical thinking, whether it's the crackdown for the ICOs, whether it's uh, banning of the Bitcoin, not banning the Bitcoin, regulating the Bitcoin, whatever kind of thing that they're doing, that they're doing this kind of a magical thought process in this instead of just you know, taking a step back and waiting for actual real solid results. Too much speculation is going on in this space. And I think what it is is because we're kind of projecting. We want certain things to happen in this space. We want certain things to go our way. And so it's nice to kind of project onto China these certain ideas and ideologies onto it and not actually deal with the fundamental onto the ground um, reality of what's occurring. And fundamentally, what it, it also speaks just as in general, the perspective that some people have is just the viewpoint of the world. Um, again, I've stated this in the last almost three different episodes three episodes when it coming to the China issue. I'm not really enjoying the way that people have in this. Um, I think people are going to get hurt. I think you, as you're seeing the price drop um, within uh, the Bitcoin space, a lot of it, you know, again, it's because the FUD, fear and uncertainty and doubt. But again, some of it is legitimate on the Chinese side. So now, I do know that local Bitcoins, if you look at it, um, and look at the Chinese market and the peer-to-peer -peer market, it looks like it's still going strong. They're still not an outright ban. People are still using Bitcoin. They're still using cryptocurrencies. They're moving it out. Um, but I do feel that there's kind of a bit of restricting. You can see some of the dumping of that. Um, I think the ICO market is getting kind of hit. The alts are kind of getting hit because people are, you know, they're not allowing things to grow. They want things to be instantaneously, and they're not fundamentally really thinking about the long-term process of this. It takes a long time for things to go. It took a long time for Bitcoin to come to to what it is now. It's going to take a long time for a lot of these ICO projects. So the whole Chinese news, news thing, this is my meme, China made to order. All the news is basically whatever your belief system is. If you think China is doing this to manipulate the market to pick up cheap Bitcoins, that the ban is not going to be real, that they're the saviors of the, the cryptocurrency space by getting rid of these, you know, uh, ICOs, then here you are. You have your ready to made order China. Whatever you think it is, whatever you believe it is, is China made to order. And that's pretty much what's really going on within the cryptocurrency space because the news is not quite sound. Uh, news organizations um, that are in China are not quite up onto the cryptocurrency space. What cryptocurrency news we have don't have the depth to go to China and get, you know, the interviews and the resources and things of that nature. So we're relying on like WeChats and secondhand and people that have sources in there and whether or not they're doing mar market manipulation or anything like that or their interest, uh, it's not really resolved. And whatever statements receive is, you know, um, not the best translations. It usually takes about a day for people to go through and properly translate, you know, the government statements. So here we have my poor man's version of you know making a meme um, for this space is you know China made to order and I think it pretty much sums up what we're going to expect for the two pretty much to the end of the year until China actually comes out with a clarity and clearness from the government because it, it has to come from the government the government's the one doing it so what they're doing you know uh, with the shutting down of the exchanges, what's going to happen with the miners, what's going to happen with the people in the space, the ICOs, all that. Uh, when that finally comes out, which I think is going to probably come out around towards the end of October after a number of their significant uh, festivals and events that they have with the party are done, um, you're going to see some type of news either either way, um, however it you know, finishes out. And that's just traditionally how you know the Chinese government does things. But for now, here we have it. China made the order. So like and subscribe. Uh, share this um, with all your friends. And thank you for listening. And to the moon.